Welcome to my latest video. Well, this is going to be part two of my new video series on PC virtualization. And in this video, I'm going to do a full install of VMware's ESXi virtualization hypervisor. I did mention that in a couple of previous videos I did that I'm considering that for my new virtualization server that I'll be building soon. But I want to test it out first and make sure it works fine. So I'm going to do a full download of the software from the VMware site. I'm going to download one of their free keys and I'm going to then install it here on my test bench and see how it runs. And I'll do a match comparison between that and one or two others that I plan on at least looking at before I make the final decision. So stick around to the end of the video and you'll actually see it up and running on the screen in its full glory. Okay, you need to go to this website. I'll put the link down in the notes of this video in order to get the free key. It's a full key that uh, it basically is in perpetuity that you can use for your VMware ESXi implementation. And it will work for most people in most ham home labs because uh, only the uh, real high-end computers that are used by large organizations would need more than what you're given with the standard key. So we have to create an account. We need to register. I have an email address I set up just for this. And I need to do a create account on it. And in the create account, I will do... I give it to my address, email address. So now we're just going to fill out these fields here and uh, complete the account. Okay, let's hit register. I have to go to my email in order to activate this. Okay, I've entered the code that they sent me. Now we'll click on verify code. And it's been activated. So now I have an account with VMware. Let me go to VMware Customer Connect. And we're back here again. So I've got to go here and click on License and Download after I log in again, of course. Okay, so now I'm logged in, and what did it do? Right here, which I'm blocking out for purposes of this video, I now have a license key. So I will copy that license key right off the bat and save it. And now I will go and download the binary. I want the VMware Spears ISO image that's right over here. I will do a manual download. It's now coming in downloading into my download area of my browser. And it's done. I like to click on the little folder part here. That opens up the actual area where it was stored on my disk. And I will save this to an area where it won't get uh, lost or destroyed. And this is what I have to then create the actual bootable USB stick with. The next thing you will need is a program, a free program called Rufus. I'll put the link down below, rufus.ie. Here's the actual link over here if you wanted to type it down. And this is the program. It's very simple to run. You're going to need to download it. So if you come over here and click this link where it says right at this point here, Rufus 3.18, and there it is. It's now downloaded. And this is a tool that you would run. I would, again, open this up and save it somewhere because you may want to install it on your PC for future use. The next thing we'll do is use this Rufus to create the USB stick. Okay, now we need a USB stick. I have one here that has recently been reinitialized. It's a 16 gig USB. USB 2.0 is fine. So we'll see if we have to format it or not once I plug it in. Yeah, it looks like we have to format it, so I'll do a format on it. And it's all done. So now let's run Rufus. It does see a 16 gig, no label on drive D. So now let's select the ISO file where I put it when I downloaded it. Hit select here. I put it in this temporary directory. There we go, right here. So it has the destination, which is the device it's gonna go to. It has the ISO image selected. The rest of this stuff, we can basically just take the defaults. So I'll hit start. It's telling me do I want to override the, uh, the boot image with it? I will say yes to that. It's giving me a warning, and now it's proceeding. Okay, it's ready to go. I can now close this, and we're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now I've inserted the USB that we just made with Rufus into my test bench. It has an uninitialized hard drive on it, so let me turn it on. Oh, and we have the, the boot menu that came up. So we just have to hit enter at this point, and it's loading ESXi, the installer. It's running a form of Linux. It looks like as the 
base operating system that the uh, hypervisor is based upon. It's a very small kernel, I'm sure, from that uh, Linux. And here we go, it's initializing. Some basic services are getting loaded at this point. And now it's ready for the initial configuration. So for this one, I want to continue, so I'll just hit enter. If I hit 11, I accept all of their license agreements, which is what I'll do. Scanning for available devices. It should just see the one hard drive. And there it is, 465.76 gigabytes. It also sees the USB disk, but I'm obviously not gonna load it onto there. So I believe I can arrow up and down and then hit enter. And it should install on the hard drive. The disk will be overridden completely, so I'm gonna hit enter. That's what I wanna do. The US is the default. I will accept that and hit enter. I have to select a root password, so I'll pick one. It makes you re-enter it. I had to arrow down and then hit enter again. The disk will be repartitioned, the Western Digital Drive that's in there, and that's what I'll let it do. So I'll hit F11 now. You gotta be careful what it's asking you to do. So it's F11 and now it's installing. It says enter to reboot. I gotta remove the installation media. So I'm removing the USB and then I'm gonna hit enter. The server will shut down and then reboot. This will take a short time. Okay, there it goes. It's booting off the hard drive. It has completed. So from start to finish at this point was under nine minutes and we installed it on a hard drive. So I will be reconfiguring this. I have to go into the user interface, which has to be done from another computer. And there's just a couple more things I'll do to uh, finish up this part two. Okay, what I've done is I've gone to the IP address that was specified in the previous screen. This is the one that had been assigned by my DHCP server to this new ESXi VMware server. I need to log in as root. I have to use the password that I used before. And now I am in the initial screen of VSXi. I can actually see the status of the host. I can see statistics that are popping up in terms of uses of different things. And I'll, I'll cover a lot of this in the next video when I actually take it to install a virtual image on it. It says right now I'm using ESXi in evaluation mode. It only gives me 60 days in that case. So the first thing you'd wanna do is the license that we got earlier. You can go ahead and set that license. So if we go into manage, there's licensing. And if you pick this little action thing here, one of the things is to assign a license. So all we have to do is paste in that license that we had before, and then we do a check license and we'll all be set. It'll be permanent. We can use it for as long as we want. So I won't do that right now because I'll probably reload this somewhere else. And the second thing you'd wanna do is go into security and users. Right now there's only one account here under users. I suggest you go ahead and add at least one additional account so if we click on that, we can then fill it in just like most operating systems. It'll ask us for the name we wanna use, a description of what it is, a password two times, and we're ready to go. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I just wanted to show you where that was. And then the last thing I would do to consider it ready to go is to go into networking, go into management network, pick this one right here, VMK0. And so you see our IP address currently there. Click on that. This shows how the current IP address and subnet mask and everything that goes along with that was set by our DHCP server. I like to have these servers set up with a fixed IP. So if we come over here and hit edit settings, we can turn off DHCP and put a static, and then we can actually change the IP address to whatever we'd like to do. So we click on IP version four, it's currently set to that same DHCP address. I can change that to whatever address that I want. Let's say I wanted it to be in my range of fixed. I could change this part to, let's say 222. I know that that's a free one. I'll leave the subnet mask alone at this time, although this is all changing later. And this one I will save. It won't take effect, however, until we actually reboot. So we would have to go back and reboot the server screen, the one that we were looking at when we finished the install. And that's basically it. And then at this point, we're ready to go. We can go ahead and either leave this up or shut it down. The next step in the next video will actually be installing some VM images. I'm thinking about three initially, probably Windows 10, Windows 11, and maybe Ubuntu Linux. And then maybe in a future video after that, I might try different ones, some, some more non-mainstream type images. But we'll see how it goes. So until the next time.